Good morning, my busy bees. You are now listening to the morning buzz here at 90.3 WMSC Upper Montclair. I'm your host, Lars Zuccardi, and join with me today are two very lovely people. We have my co-host, Amanda Gediosi, and our newscaster, Ashley Ramos. And you guys, we have some breaking news for you, like fresh. This is fresh out of the news, fresh out of the article. You already know it is it honestly blew me out of the water. I'm so glad I checked. I checked before we started because, oh my God, I'm so excited to cover it. It's going to be crazy because you guys aren't going to believe what's going on. And spoiler alert, it's about Trump. We're going to be talking a lot about Trump today. So if that's a trigger for you, you have been warned. But we're also going to be talking about a Facebook user's message in Nebraska about abortion. And we're also going to talk about New Jersey's first drought watch since white year. You guys are going to have to stay tuned to find out. But without further ado, we have a wonderful news update. Ashley, can you hear us on the other side of my computer screen? Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> yes, I again gonna do it every week because why not? <laughs> Good morning, everyone. My name is Ashley. And I'm joining you on this Wednesday morning from 90.3 WMSC Upper Montclair. In Montclair news, Montclair has been named an official Monarch City by Monarch USA, becoming only the second town named in New Jersey and fifth in the Mid-Atlantic region. This recognition will help us to increase the section of the Monarch in town as well as other important pollinators. Jose German Gomez Northeast Earth Coalition founder said. More importantly, it will help us to create more habitats for the pollinators. In New Jersey news, one person was dead and others were injured after a bus traveling from New York to Philadelphia overturned Tuesday night on the New Jersey Turnpike in Woodbridge, officials said. There is one confirmed fatality and five serious injuries. New Jersey State Police Troopers Charles Martin told NJ Advance Media. The outer roadway and service area ramp are closed for the investigation. In national news, the Federal Bureau of Investigation sent agents to Mar-a-Lago, Mar the Florida state of former President Donald Trump, on Monday to execute a search warrant, but many questions still remain about the incident. The White House said Tuesday that it was not aware of the raid before it even happened. The FBI has also yet to clarify what property was retrieved during the search. And now for some weather, it is currently 70, 76 degrees and partly cloudy. Today, there will be a high of 86 and a low of 73. Tomorrow, there will be some rain showers and in the high 80s, and this weekend, it will be sunny with some passing clouds in the 80s. Thank you, and back to you, Laura. Thank you so much, Ashley. That was a beautiful news update. And to close off that little weather right there, I just wanted to let you guys know, and a little quick PSA because this is really important, make sure you stay hydrated today. It's going. It's it's August, so you know it's hot. It's sweltering outside. We got a drought warning. Please stay hydrated. Anyway, time for sports. Especially if you're playing sports, you should definitely be hydrated. So we're gonna kick it to some. Actually, no, we're not gonna kick it. We're gonna pitch it to some baseball news. So yesterday, the Yankees took on the Seattle Mariners, but they lost zero to one. And when I saw that, that was pretty sad. But this leaves the Yankees standing to 71 to 40. But also the Mets played the Cincinnati Reds yesterday and they won six to two. And you guys, I can't believe this. I can't believe I'm saying this because I would have never thought. I would have never thought. Actually, no, you know, what? I never would have thought about doing a sports cast, but here we are. But I never thought I'm going to say this. The Mets standing is 72 to 39. And I literally cannot believe the Mets are in the lead for the standings. <sighs> anyway, the Yankees are playing the Seattle Mariners again at 410. And this afternoon, the Mets are playing the Cincinnati Reds at 110. Honestly, you guys, it's not a good day to be a Yank, a Yankees fan. Congratulations to all you Mets fans. I'm sure you're all going to. You're not you're not going to let me forget the Yank that the Mets have a have a two game I have a two lead. You feel me? So, we get it. I don't know. We get it. But congratulations, I guess. But I hope the I hope the Yanks can, you know, get a home run to win to I don't know, sports are hard. I'm trying my best. <laughs> anyway, we are <laughs> we're going to um we're going to, you know, pitch it over 
to some top news. I got to stop using that transition. (laughs) I got to stop using it because it's just not working. (laughs) But this is this is the Trump news that I've been waiting for. This is the Trump news that I've been waiting to not only not only report, but to only just read and sit down and talk about it and just kind of let it marinate in my system. So Trump will be questioned as New York's civil investigation nears an end. Donald J. Trump, we all know the name. We can't forget that name. He will face questioning under oath from the New York Attorney General's office today. Today, you guys. This news is fresh. This is a crucial turning point in a long-running civil investigation into his business practices. But, you know, the stakes for Mr. Trump are uncommonly high. While he has sat for numerous dispositions over the years, he fought for months to avoid the testimony this week which could shape the outcome of the investigation onto the former president and his family, his real estate business, and, you know, the Trump organization. The deposition comes at a legally perilous moment for Mr. Trump two days ago while he was at his golf club in Jersey. The FBI searched his Florida home as a part of an investigation into sensitive material that Mr. Trump took it when he left the White House, and we will be covering that story a little bit more later. But we also have some more news for you because this man's in some deep water, you guys. And you know what? It's about time. He had it coming. But also, the federal court rules that the House Committee can access Trump's tax records. You got Trump's tax records. I would like to see this man's tax records. So yesterday, the TA Federal Appeals a Court unanimously ruled that a House Committee can access former President Donald Trump's tax records following a year, a year long, geez, words are tough in the morning, you guys, years long legal battle, a three judge panel of the DC Circuit Court appeals, uh, appeals agreed that the house, wait, guys, I'm sister struggling right now. And I think I know why I'm sister struggling right now. It's because that first story, I think we should talk about it first. I'm going to backtrack a little bit because I think I need to get it out of my system and I need to say things so I could so we can move on to tax records. So forgive me. We're going to backtrack a little bit. It's about darn time, you guys. What do you guys think? Yeah, I mean, it's pretty crazy. So he's so he's going to be questioned is what I'm getting from this, which I'd like to know. There are questions. We need the answers. And after all this time, I feel like we deserve to know what's going on in this man's brain. I just, I feel like we're never going to understand, but maybe (laughs) we'll get some truth and we'll get to know. But it's pretty interesting. Sorry, you can hear me click clacking on my keyboard. I agree. It's really interesting. And I know, I know why he's so crazy. It's because it's because he's a Gemini Sun, Sagittarius Moon, and a Leo rising. So you know this man is crazy. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah, that's honestly all you need to say. And I'm like guilty. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> it's so funny because like for the people that just don't know what I'm talking about or they just don't know what that means, they're like, "What? Just just trust me. Just trust the star sign girlies. This man is crazy." <laughs> This man is crazy. Also, his Mars is in Leo, so you know this man has anger issues. Mm. The people that don't understand astrology are like, what? But, like, I get like, it. What? Yeah, um, just to sum it up really quick, Mars is the planet of aggression and, you know, feeling anger. But it's also motivation. And Leo is a fire sign, so fire signs tend to be very, you know, fiery hate to like have that kind of stigma like that kind of stereotype but it's pretty much true so this man has a temper and you know what he also has a temper with his emotions which is his moon sign Sagittarius is a fire sign so you know this man has anger issues and you know what it's about darn time that this man is questioned no yeah for sure I mean like I say every week I feel like we're just this is never going to end. So I hope that this will start to really give us the information we need to really make sense of everything that's been happening for the past year. It's so funny because we always say, 
oh, I hope it's coming to an end. Here we have three stories about Trump this morning. Are you literally joking? (laughs) True. I literally, okay, I literally can't. But I think I've let, you know, the investigation marinate in my system so I feel a little bit better. Um, I'm an air sign, so I got to, like, talk things out. I got to talk out through my feelings. Anyway, I think it's time that we talk about the tax records because that's the next elephant in the room. And elephants are cool, but not this one. Oh, my gosh, that's so funny because... Oh my gosh, you guys, that's so funny because the mascot for the Republican Party is an elephant. What? That's so funny. I would have never, I would have never thought. I, I, I'm also buying time to play a sound effect. Anyway, yesterday, TA Federal Appeals Court unanimously ruled that a House committee can access former President Donald Trump's tax records following a years-long legal battle. A three-judge panel of the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals agree that the House Ways and Means Committee has the authority to obtain Trump's tax records from the Treasury Department, upholding a district court ruling from late last year. Trump's lawyers are all but certain to appeal the ruling. NBC News has reached out to a Trump spokesman and a member of his legal team for comment. The court ruling adds to Trump's legal woes following an FBI search of his Margolo home on Monday, which we will be covering very shortly. A source familiar with the matter told NBC News that the search was tied to classified information Trump allegedly took with him from the White House to his Palm Beach resort in January of 2021. Yesterday's appeals court ruling is the latest twist in a multi-layer legal fight over his tax records. A federal judge in December tossed out Trump's law Trump's lawsuit seeking to block the House panel from obtaining his tax returns, objecting the former president's claim that Congress has no legitimate need to look at the returns and that Congress was simply snooping in an effort to embarrass him. You guys, I'm going to say that last like little sentence. Rejecting the former president's claim that Congress has no legitimate need to look at the returns and that Congress was simply snooping around in effort to embarrass him. Are you literally joking? Are you literally joking? You know what? I would like to say that I'm surprised, but I'm not. I'm literally not. Yeah, see, in my opinion, that sounds a little, like, suspicious. Like, I feel like if you're not doing anything wrong, you shouldn't have to care and feel like, oh, you don't need to look at this. And also, I feel like he is like one of the people who wants to look into other people the most. He's like, well, why don't you look at their tax records? Why don't you look at this and this and this? But when it comes to him, he's like very secretive and very, oh, no, no, no. You're just trying to embarrass me. But I feel like my opinion, his main goal is to embarrass other people. So I don't understand. It's very hypocritical. But you know i gotta say um are any of you our listeners out there too i would like to to just think about this question think about the answer to this question have you guys heard of hammurabi's code by any chance i have not but that's okay because i'm gonna tell you so back in i don't know i think it was ancient mesopotamia or whatever it's been a while since sixth grade history class so forgive me if i'm saying anything that is not correct but Hammurabi's code, he was a leader of Mesopotamia or something. And his code basically was an eye for an eye. So um. it's one thing for the other thing. So if you're prodding people, oh, let me see your tax records. Okay, pull up your receipts then. If you're so adamant about looking at other people's, let's see your tax records. Or 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 are you just are you just upset because they don't exist? Oh, oh my gosh, that's so crazy. Anyway, the rich need to start paying taxes, please, and thank you, because the working class, the divide between the working class and the rich are just, it's, it's, it divides and it grows apart every single day. And people, everyday people are struggling to live. Everyday people are struggling to pay rent, to get food, to have, to literally do things, you know what I mean? And you're sitting on a pile of money, not paying your taxes while other people are suffering. It's so selfish. It's literally so selfish. 
I agree. I've never understood that though, how people just because they have a lot of money, like don't have to pay their taxes. Like how does that make sense? Here's a little warning. We have a Trump impression coming in. I don't need to pay my taxes. (laughs) I'm so great. I don't need to pay them. Why do I need to pay them? But I want to look at your tax records. I want to see them. But you can't see mine. You can't see mine. Only I can see mine. <laughs> if they don't exist. Anyway, I'm going to stop before I get carried away. We have, we have another story for you. And, you know, I had to do some real searching for this one. Not really. It's a joke. Don't worry. Yes. <laughs> this, this, sorry. I got distracted for a second. So many trump stories but this one it's okay what, what we were yeah. talking about in the beginning <laughs> the <road> about me <laughs> sorry I, i'll stop i'll stop no honestly it's a pretty good impression like oh my gosh thank you i worked on it okay before we like report our story i just want to let you guys know i've practiced my trump impression all throughout quarantine and be like beyond quarantine so this was like this is a good lots of practice the dedication was there. Yeah, I was quite I was I was quite bored. Oh yeah, quarantine was a very boring time, so I don't blame you. <laughs> but like we said in the beginning, we're gonna be talking about the search of Donald Trump's Florida residence. So for much of the year, small cracks in Donald Trump's political support have been growing. Dissatisfied Republican primary voters began to consider new presidential prospects. GOP donors grappled with damaging revelations uncovered by the January 6th committee. Several party leaders pondered challenging Trump for the party's 2024 nomination. But after the FBI executed a search warrant at his Florida estate, the Republican Party unified swiftly behind the former president. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, who likely represents Trump's strongest potential primary challenger, described the Biden administration as a regime and also called Monday's Mar-a-Lago search for improperly taken classified documents as, quote, another escalation in the weaponization of federal agencies against the regime's political opponents. Trump tapped in to that animosity to overcome two impeachments and the fallout from an insurrection. His allies said Tuesday that the FBI search would only strengthen his position again. Indiana GOP Rep Jim Banks, the chair of the Republican Study Committee, committee, excuse me, said in an interview, quote, the sooner he kicks off his campaign, the better. Banks was among about a dozen Republican lawmakers who spent several hours yesterday evening with Trump at his summer home in Bedminster, New Jersey. According to Banks, the meal they included, they had included some tasty food and talked about the upcoming midterm elections and the 2024 presidential race, Banks said. Oh my God, that's so cute. They had a little supper together. <laughs> Anyway, um, please, for the love of God, please, for the love of God, I literally, I can't, I can't deal with another four years of this man. But you know what? I have a plan. I have a plan in my little noggin that if I need to, I will act upon. So before, like, before we, you know, go to our little break, I was thinking, because, you know, that's all I do is think. And because he's like, oh, they're talking about running again. Twenty, He's like talking about running again in 2024. And I'm like, please, God, no. But the worst, I'm thinking worse comes to worse. Worse comes to worse. He runs. He wins. Oh, no. What do I do? I Listen, I'm going to do this research when it gets closer to 2024. Hopefully when I'm graduated. And I'm just thinking, okay, I go to Canada. I go to Ontario. I try to find a job in Ontario. I try to move to Ontario. I drive up to Canada, try to get a visa in Canada. Or you know what? If that doesn't work because that's a little too close, we're just going to go to Europe. And that's my plan. Honestly, not a bad plan. You could travel, see the world. Yeah, I can like, (gasps) Amanda, I just realized van life exactly For those of you who don't know what van life is van life is um just a bu- just a bunch of people just living in a van just being nomads just just driving around having remote jobs just being in nature the fact that i want that to be my life so badly like i just want to live off the land in my little van and just travel like that is the dream right there i do more of like a bulky oh you know those people on tiktok for those of you who don't know 
um there's people on tiktok that renovate school buses and they yes. live in school buses yes those they honestly look nicer than some houses in my opinion like some of those school buses are like nicer than my room i'm like Dude, good for you they fix them up so nicely mm-hmm. you know what if worse comes to worse i won't mind living in a van in canada and just traveling yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not a bad idea i don't know if I, I you know what maybe i could take the van to europe probably not like you probably probably not where they drive on the left side of the road though true but that is if worse comes to worse that is really if worse comes to worse and with that being said we're going to take a very short break here in the morning bus but don't worry don't worry don't worry we're gonna be back soon so please we're gonna miss you but don't worry we'll be back lickety split and cut Now give me two claps and a Ric Flair. Woo! Woo! Anyway, welcome back to the Morning Buzz here at 90.3 WMSC. Welcome back. I missed you guys. We we missed you. We we did miss you. Nosotros means we in Spanish. I don't know what I'm talking about. Also, I just want to say, I just want to say this. I was having a thought. I was having a thought while I was on the break and i was sipping my coffee this is not sponsored i would like to emphasize that i would just like to say my coffee is hitting so different this morning i love coffee like a good latte i could go for a cup of coffee oh no amanda hold on i got you i turned your mic on i don't know you're a good girl i just said i could go for a cup of coffee right now but then i would be crazy but it would wake me up so you know what i usually have a coffee every week on the morning buzz because i need a little pick me up i need a little caffeine buzz going (laughs) but no it's literally this coffee is literally hitting different today i don't know what is in it but it's hitting different that's all i wanted to say we're going to get a little more serious because i can't believe this story exists although it's all the way in nebraska i find it quite important Facebook users' messages bring abortion charges 
in Nebraska. A Nebraska woman was charged with two felonies related to an illegal abortion after authorities discovered information about the pregnancy through private messages on Facebook Messenger. The case renewed debate about how law enforcement may use social media accounts in cases involving reproductive choices. The messages were collected from Facebook parent company Meta using a search warrant after investigators in June requested the woman's personal information to determine whether she had committed other crimes, including concealing the death of another person. The warrant from local law enforcement asked for data going back to April 15th, including account information, images, audiovisual recordings, private messages, and other data. The warrant didn't mention abortion, but it was related to a series of alleged felonies, including illegal burial of a stillborn baby. Police added charges alleging an illegal abortion weeks later, after information received from the social network suggested that the woman helped her 17-year-old daughter obtain abortion pills. The daughter was more than 20 weeks pregnant, making a termination of the pregnancy illegal in the state. Her daughter is also facing related charges. In response to the case, Meta spokesman Andy Stone emphasized that the request from law enforcement didn't discuss abortion. So you guys, this is such an interesting story because I'll be honest with you, I've never really seen or reported anything like this up until now. And it just goes to show how social media is still so is still pretty much so new to us and it's finally making its way into law enforcement. You know what I mean? It's just like messages. Are you kidding me? That's crazy. That is crazy. But also, this is like a very crazy story to me. As you're reading it, I'm like, wow. As you're reading it, I mean, of course, abortion now is illegal in this state. And I understand that may be frustrating to some people, but also that is still illegal. That is still murder. And to me, that deserves charges like if you're illegally burying a stillborn baby to try and cover your tracks and then message about it on facebook is a little that's a little far that's bad that is bad i would also um like to thank our general manager for sending this story in our news chat on discord and she was saying how I don't know, just before, like before like we get upset about the story about how, like what you said, Amanda, how it is illegal. 20 weeks is illegal in that state. You know what I mean? And it's just, oh my, you went to cover your track, so you know it was wrong. I don't know. Personally, at that point in that state, like there's there's a time limit, you know? I feel like there is, there's like a probably like what, like first trimester, you mm-hmm. usually have one. But 20 weeks, that's pretty much pushing it where you're going into the second and it's starting to become an actual fetus. And at that point, it's just way too late to have one. Like, it's way too late. Yeah, and there's I with the abortion debate, there's always going to be that debate of how far along is too far along to have an abortion. But I feel like if you're physically able to have this baby, this stillborn baby, and bury it to me personally that feels a little too far along and it's really sad in my opinion for the the baby that is now you know I 100% agree with you and what I was going to say oh I feel like there shouldn't be there should not be an abortion past that first trimester unless there are complications with the mother and or the baby and in this case there didn't there didn't seem to be any complications with the mother or the baby and she just didn't want the child like at that point you're that far along you like should have the child because good god it's i feel really really awful for that you know fetus that poor fetus man No, I definitely agree. And like you said, with the complications, if there were to be complications, I feel like you would have to handle that with your doctor or someone, a medical professional, rather than you and your mother do it yourself and just 
to me that's very morbid and sad I don't know this it's a very fine line with this story it's very like I I know there's a lot of people who believe that abortion should be legal and there's people that think it should be illegal and I know we've been especially on this um, radio show we've been very for abortion should be legalized but at the same time with a story like this I feel like there's a limit I 100% agree with you and I think the story just reminds us that yes abortion should be legal but only past a certain point you know yeah I I was gonna say something now it's just driving me crazy like what's he gonna say I don't know but like you also I am also thinking about it from their point of view because I can't help but like think about all aspects of it I don't some things just like oh like she can give the baby up for adoption, but the foster care system is so messed up and backed up now, yeah. especially. And then it's like, oh, you can keep the child, but, you know, finances. She's 17 years old. She is a child as well. Like, you're not fully an adult yet. She's having. Yeah. But at the same time, those are your only two options at that point, at that point in that second trimester. Yeah. And like you said, I mean, 17 years old, that's still very, that is young. You're still a child yourself, but at the same time, her mother, the adult in this situation should have been more responsible and have taken the proper steps and actions for this situation. Cause really something like this is very illegal and has always been very illegal. If you're, if you have a stillborn baby and you bury it and try to forget about it that is a very illegal thing to do i'll be honest with you if like i don't know if that was if i was in that person's shoes and that happened i would i would not be able to like live with myself like just knowing the fact that like that that took place like i just i couldn't you know i wouldn't do that in the first place of course but seriously like i couldn't live with live with myself but we are going to move on to another story and this one's quite interesting. And I'm excited. This, I'm kind of excited for this one. Yeah, Not this really. is interesting because I was reading it before and I was like, huh, okay. So very interesting. New Jersey issues their first drought warning watch since 2016. Yesterday, officials in New Jersey announced a statewide drought watch for the first time in six years, urging residents to conserve water amid persistent dry conditions. According to the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection, or the DEP, the issuance of the drought watch is the first step in the Garden State's three-stage drought advisory system. Per the DEP, the watch serves to sell public awareness about the stress on state water supplies and encourage voluntary conservation measures. The DEP warned if conditions in the state do not improve, the declaration of a drought warning or drought emergency with mandatory restrictions could become necessary because more than 30% of water demand in New Jersey's suburban areas serves outdoor purposes in the summer. The DEP advised residents to cut back on watering of lawns and landscaping, reducing car washing and non-essential uses such as hosing off driveways and sidewalks is also critical. New Jersey's last drought watch or warning occurred in October 2016 when the DEP placed 14 counties under a warning due to ongoing precipitation deficits the most recent drought emergency occurred in march 2002 amanda i would just like to say you have such a nice reporting voice (laughs) you do i'm just like listening to you i'm like oh you sound so nice (laughs) i appreciate that thank you but this story is wild i know dude well 20 okay in my brain i'm still like mentally it's like oh it's 2020 i'm 18 years old no babes it's 2022 you were 20 years old and 2016 was six years ago yeah 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 i'm gonna leave you guys with that because i feel old i also feel old i was a sophomore in high school and i was just doing my thing not thinking about the drought probably i was i was in eighth grade dude Anyway, <laughs> we're going to be taking a we're taking a very short break and you know, I don't know why there's just always a pattern when I'm you know, behind the board and I always play Rex Orange County. So we're going to play another wonderful Rex Orange County song. 
And this one is called If You Want It. Definitely don't want this drought, but it's here. <laughs>
Welcome back here on the Morning Buzz. Sorry, we had a little, we had a few technical complications, you know, the usual. Anyway, <laughs> we missed you guys. But this story, you guys, whew, this story. After firing unvaccinated workers, Hershey says it can't make enough candy for Halloween and blames Putin. Last week here in the Morning Buzz, we covered a story about Hershey not being able to make enough candy for Halloween. But this time, we finally find out why. According to reports, the Hershey company is facing capacity constraints that will greatly reduce the output of candy in the upcoming months, resulting in demand exceeding supply. And get this, Hershey is blaming Russian President Vladimir Putin for its induced problems. Earlier this year, Hershey fired all of its unvaccinated employees, which created a worker shortage. Now, company CEO Michael Buck wants to blame Putin's supply chain issues and everything else other than herself for Hershey going down the tubes. Buck made these and other false accusations against the others for her company's fate during a recent quarterly earnings to call in with investors. And you know, in a nutshell, Hershey will not have the capacity to maintain output in anticipation of its busiest holiday because it previously engaged in medical fascism against its unjabbed employees. Okay, where do we want to start? Because I don't know where to start. This is a lot to take in right now. (laughs) With this story, I mean, she's blaming Putin. She's firing people. All I know is I'm not getting my candy and I'm upset. Me too. I literally am upset. Again, they have pe- Reese's Pieces, Reese's, you know, regular Reese's. What else do they have? Hershey, right? Just regular Hershey, Hershey's. I can't talk. Do they do Twix? No. I'm not sure, but I remember last week we said they did Kit Kats. They did they Jolly did. Ranchers. So all of the good candies. Yeah. At least we still have Sour Patch Kids. True. Ooh, yeah. Oh, and the Sour Punch straws, those are really good. Oh, love those. But, you know, like, Hershey's is the Halloween candy. Like, trick-or-treating is not going to be the same this year if I don't get a Reese's Cup, a Kit Kat. We'll just make them ourselves. Tr- true but <laughs> it's not the same i know it is not the same but it is true it might be healthier and maybe better but yeah. it's halloween i know like we're not doing this to be healthy no definitely not i want my sugary candy me too girlfriend but okay this next story I, i'm sorry I, I really want i'm really itching to get to this next story so i'm funny, itching this story I have never seen the show, so I'm going to try my very hardest with pronunciation. Okay, I'll help you out. Targaryen. That's Targaryen. how you say Targaryen. Okay, yeah. I looked it up before, so that makes a lot more sense. Targaryen. Awesome. Okay, so House of the Dragon Star turned down Game of Thrones because it had dragons. <laughs> huh. <laughs> All right. Patty Considine, who played King Viserys Tar- Targaryen. Targaryen. Good job. Awesome. In HBO's House of the Dragon, turned down the opportunity to star in Game of Thrones because it had dragons. Huh. All right. Miguel Sapochnik and Ryan Condal's upcoming series is set to debut on August 21st and serves as a prequel to Game of Thrones, where the latter series was based on George R. R. Martin's fantasy novels. In addition to Considine, House of Dragon stars Matt Smith, Olivia Cook, Emma Darcy, and more. House of the Dragon picks up 200 years before the events of the flagship series following the Targaryen at the height of their power with dozens of dragons. Its plot focuses on the King of the Seven Kingdoms' decision to name his daughter heir to the Iron Throne, which sparks a civil war known as the Dance of the Dragons. While Considine sits on the throne in House of the Dragon, turns out that the other actor could have traveled to Westeros over a decade ago. Awesome. In a recent interview with the Sunday Times via IndieWire, 
Considine revealed that he was approached about starring in Game of Thrones before the fantasy series changed television forever. However, when his agent told him the show was about dragons, the actor declined to read the script. Huh. Sorry. That is funny. I mean, he is now starring in a show about dragons. Okay, but the kicker is the show is literally called House of the Dragon. <laughs> Okay, but like the more I was thinking about the about it and the more you were reading it, the more I was thinking and you know, I read like the whole article and it was interesting because they were talking about how oh, like we it's like too much of a fantasy kind of a thing and it has like, you know, x y and z and like dragons and like it's nerdy cuz like fantasy like there's the the fantasy genre is very nerdy. Like that whole stigma around it, you know, you have Dungeons and Dragons. Come on. Like that's listen, that's as nerdy as it gets. And as someone who has played D, it's as nerdy as it gets, trust me. <laughs> but it's so interesting because when you think about it, Game of Thrones was such it was a big hit, you know, and it changed that fantasy genre like for you know, we're still like getting the aftermath of aftermath of it because now we have a spin-off show. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, I n- personally never watched Game of Thrones, but it was huge, a huge sensation. I mean, everyone I knew n- and know was watching it when it was on. It was like a huge thing when like this last season came out. So mm. I guess he missed his opportunity there. But, you know, now he's in this show. So I guess that's pretty interesting. Probably yeah. has dragons in it because it's called House of the Dragon. So I hope he got over that problem. <laughs> Honestly, I hope he did, too, because. Honestly, I haven't watched. Okay, I watched four seasons of Game of Thrones in 2019 when the last season came out. I think. Um, I know my parents watched. I think, or they watched the last episode. I don't know, but I uh, I paid for HB like the add on because remember, throwback. Um, Hulu had an add on for HBO before HBO Max was a thing. I just remembered that, and. That's how I watched it. I paid I paid for it a little bit, watched four seasons, and then I just kind of stopped paying for Hulu because I was in high school, you know? You know. Yeah. Hulu's expensive, so I get that. Hulu, Hulu Live is expensive. That's what I have. So mm, my parents have it, so I just, you know. Oh well, Sam, I'm not paying for it. Like my dad pays for it, but I know it's expensive, but you know. I guess it's better than just normal live TV nowadays. Everything's all about the streaming services. So Amanda be like, Hulu's expensive. Also, Amanda <laughs> doesn't pay for Hulu. Yeah, yeah, I don't pay for it, but I just I've heard that it's expensive. <laughs> I okay, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think just Hulu Live is fifty four ninety nine a month. Yeah. See, that sounds crazy to me, but maybe that's because I'm a struggling college student in crippling debt. But like, that sounds crazy to me. Fifty-four dollars a month. Like, I think Netflix is like twelve, right? Was no. it? Netflix. Netflix. Am I so behind on the time? Subscription card. Co- okay, I think it went up by a lot. Um, let's see. Because, <laughs> um. I almost want to sign into my Netflix and find out which one I have. <laughs> okay. So. Oh. Oh, this is interesting. So premium is 20 a month. Standard okay. is 15. Basic is $9.99. Um, so let's see. Monthly costs, you know, that we have that. For basic, number of screens you can watch on at the same time, one. Standard, you get two. Premium, you get four. The number of phones or tablets you can have, one, two, or four. Basic, basic, standard, and premium all share unlimited movies, TV shows, and mobile games. And you can also watch on your laptop, TV, phone, and tablet. But standard and premium have HD available, while premium just has ultra HD available. So depending how you look at it, $9.99 to $19.99 a month. What's crazy to me? Here's the kicker. All I know every I feel like this is just a very like nationwide experience where your parents are like, oh, 
live television is so expensive to pay for. So let me just buy every single streaming service a month and it will save us money. But I feel like at this rate, there's so many streaming services that are so expensive each month. You're pretty much paying for live television at that point. But, you know, I guess we do get access to more television shows. So they'd be like, cable's so expensive. Cable. Every, every streaming service. You know what? That's how the times are moving. I haven't seen a cable box in how many years? But that's okay because Italy's not seeing any more of this. Yes. Domino's pizza. Let's talk about it. Oh. <laughs> I love Domino's. So Domino's is mid. Depends on the time of day. If it's middle of the day, mm-hmm. it is mid. But if it's like midnight and you're really craving pizza. Okay. Before we like, I like the cinnamon sticks. True. Yeah. yeah. True. All right. So let's get into this, guys. Domino's Pisa tried to crack Italy, and it went as badly as you'd expect. Italy is saying, Adridice. Did I do that right? I hope so. Ready? Arrivederci. Arrivederci. (laughs) I am Italian, but I don't speak it. All right. So to Domino's Pizza, after seven years of business, Back in 2015, the chain pizza restaurant opened up stores first in Milan and then spread at 28 more locations around Italy with the hopes of adding 880 more. But it seems the Italians weren't extremely fond of the fast food pizza chain as all 29 stores have closed. Opened in partnership with E-Pizza Spa, SPA, Domino's hope to bring the easy, casual, and American-style pizza to Italians while still adhering to Italian traditions. But the seven-year-long attempt at bringing pizza to the pizza capital of the world has failed, according to reports. Bloomberg reported, E-Pizza said in a report to investors, quote, we attribute the issue to the significantly increased level of competition in the food delivery market with both organized change and mom and pop restaurants delivering food to service and restaurants reopening post pandemic and consumers out and about with revenge spending. Upon hearing the news that Italian Domino's franchises would be closing, people online joked that selling franchise pizza to Italians was a bad idea from the start. Yes, it was a bad idea. Yeah, d- that definitely doesn't make sense. I feel like Domino's is like a here thing because we don't have that authentic Italian pizza. I mean, New Jersey, I think is the closest you can get to like real good pizza. <laughs> Mamma mia. Mamma mia. Pizza <laughs> pie. But yeah, I mean, Domino's in Italy was definitely not a good idea, but hey, you lasted for seven years. So good on you, I guess. Okay. When, when we're like almost done with the show, I want to play that one. Like the, the, I really want to listen to that song like really badly I don't know why I just thought of that but okay as an Italian well half Italian okay I you can correct me if I'm wrong but I took Italian for two semesters because that is a a language requirement is required here at Montclair State but I'm not good at languages but we were learning about like culture and all that in my Italian class. And apparently pizza in Naples, I think, is just dough and sauce. I think. No, yeah, I'm pretty sure that too. Like, I feel like we have a different perception of what pizza actually is in Italy. Like, I, I think it might be thicker in Italy if I'm not mistaken. Because I know here we like really thin crust pizza. So I'm not mm. too sure about that. But that's what I've heard. I could be very wrong. I'm looking this up because I literally need to know everything same I'm, I'm bad like I, I just like need to know we need the facts but that's okay yeah um literally ooh. okay there's like one with cheese um oh never mind this is how you eat your pizza what <laughs> famous pizza in naples italy let's see what's the most popular people pizza in naples Okay, I want. I just need a picture. I just need to look at it, and then I could describe it to you. Okay, I'm seeing a lot of cheese. I'm seeing a lot of cheese, but I don't know if this is correct, and it's gonna drive me a little crazy. I feel like cheese is such a crucial part of a pizza, but that's because I am 
a cheese lover myself. But then again, I do love margarita pizzas with the mozzarella cheese on it. This is what it's looking like. Oh my gosh. Kind of off topic, but off but but on topic. Um, one of my friends from high school is coming over tonight and we're making pizza. Like like we're getting like the dough and we're just making pizza. And you know what? Where I've officially decided that it's going to be a margarita pizza. That's honestly the only way to do it. That sounds really fun. I've made homemade pizzas before and like just like making the pizza and like the dough and putting the sauce on it. Very fun. Mamma Mia. Mamma Mia pizza pie. Ashley, do you like some do you like a good pizza pie? Yes, of course. I'm a cheese lover too. Good. I what kind of cheese? Seed. My favorite is probably mozzarella. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very valid. Very valid. Mozzarella, the classic cheese. Pepper jack underrated one of my mm. favorites i like a little spice with my cheese Add a little bit of spice a little spice on the cheese colby jack too very good munster mm. listen i could talk about cheese for days cheese okay. for days monster monster be hitting i'll be honest um before we move on to our next story i love to make quesadillas and just a good three Mex- like three cheese Me- Mexican cheese just hits. Yeah. Like the thinly shredded. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I'll eat I that call- straight out of the bag. <gasps> Stop. I do that too. <laughs> it's so fun. It's literally so fun. It's better than like make like it's better melt. It's so much better just out of the fridge. But I don't think this Fox host likes cheese too much. I, I don't know. But Fox host says women who haven't been pregnant aren't ripe enough to run for president. Fox News host Jesse Waters said that a woman has to get married and then has to get pregnant before she is ripe enough to run for president of the United States. During Thursday night's episode of Fox News is the Five, Waiters discussed the possibility of Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez of one day running for president. We love, personally, love a good queen. Love her. Waiters told his, the five co-hosts, quote, with age comes with wisdom and she's pretty young. That's my nice way of saying she's not very smart. You know, when you pick a banana and the banana's in your hand and it's green. And then even if you try to peel it, it's not even peeling. That's AOC. She's not ripe enough to run for president. Representative Ocasio-Cortez is currently engaged to longtime boyfriend, well now, fiance, Riley Roberts. At 32, she is not old enough to run for the highest office in the country as the, you know, the constitution prevents. Oh, you can't, you can't serve past, like you have to be under, like you can't, you have to be over 35, you have to be 35. Yeah, math, numbers, woo. Waiters acknowledged Representative Ocasio-Cortez's engagement, adding, quote then you have to get pregnant and you know his other co-host you know asked him why it's like why and then he explained this is how it goes just follow me greg you have you get married then you get pregnant and once you have a baby you have a family and the media loves it they eat it up and they make you more and they make you more of a mature person i I don't know where to start (laughs) that's wild all i would like to say is if it was a 32-year-old man who was trying to run for president in a few years, they would definitely not think he has to have a kid before running for president. And that's just the tea on that. I just think some people have such small brains that they just can't wrap their head around a woman not wanting a baby. You know what I mean? It's like, it's her choice to have a family. Like, she's not ripe enough. Also, I would like to call him out on that last sentence that, quote, it makes you more mature of a person. No, it does not. It does not. If an immature person has a child, that person is still immature. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Waiters. Do I have to get pregnant to be ripe enough, sir? Am I a banana? I don't think so. Anyway, you have been listening to The Morning Buzz here at 90.3 WMSC, Upper Montclair. Love to thank my lovely crew for joining me on this wonderful morning. 
And thank you for always starting your day with us and always try to find some time to relax. PSA, drink water, stay hydrated. And of course, of course, of course, of course, have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye. You're listening to WMS.